This is R2D Tech and we're back again with another review today, this time about the new Dell XPS 15 9500. So the Dell XPS 15 has always been a fierce competitor with Apple's MacBook Pro and this year is no exception. We're getting some great updates to the design as well as the specs, so let's get into it. So let's start with the design and over the past few years Dell have kept the same design for the Dell XPS 15, so it's definitely nice to get this refresh. Dell have definitely refined the design this year um, while keeping the same design aesthetic. You're still getting aluminium on the top and bottom and the same carbon fiber weave when you open up the laptop. It's also quite a lot thinner this year at just 18 millimeters at its thickest and also a little bit lighter coming in at around 2 kg and that depends on what model you go for. The first thing you notice when you open up the XPS 15 is that amazing screen and this year it is pretty special. They've now opted for the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which I think is really good. It just means you can fit so much more on the screen vertically, which is really good for productivity. The bezels also look really thin this year on all sides, and they've still managed to fit the camera at the top of the display, which is really good to see. So let's talk about the keyboard and trackpad. And the keyboard has also been upgraded. It feels really nice when you're typing on it this year. And the keys actually have quite a nice rubbery texture, which I think is really nice. They've also made the trackpad significantly larger this year, probably to compete with Apple's MacBooks. It is really nice and smooth. It's using Windows Precision drivers and it's a really good trackpad. It's probably not quite as big or as good as Apple's trackpads, but it's definitely up there with some of the best Windows laptops. So let's move on to the specs and there are three processor options this year. You can either go for a Core i5 10300H which is a quad core processor or Core i7 10750H which is a six core processor or a Core i7 10875H which is an eight core processor. Now I should mention that unfortunately the Dell XPS 15 does still have some thermal throttling issues. If you throw too much at it, you will definitely see the core temperatures reach at least 100 degrees Celsius and you will definitely see a drop in performance. However, all of these are pretty powerful processors and if you don't throw too much at it, they should be able to handle almost anything. For RAM, this year you can either choose 816 or 32 gigs of RAM, which is standard across most laptops now. And for the secondary storage, you can go from a 256 gig SSD to a two terabyte SSD, which should be fine for most people. Both the RAM and storage are user replaceable, which is really nice to see as well. Now you can opt for an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti if you want a dedicated graphics card. The 1650 Ti is a small upgrade over what was in the last generation XPS 15, which was the 1650. It should be able to handle most games as long as you're willing to crank the graphics down on the more intensive games. Now powering all of this in terms of the battery, for some weird reason Dell have decided to decrease the size of the battery from a 97 watt hour battery to 86 watt hours. That's still a pretty big battery, however when you're comparing it to the almost 100 watt hour battery in the MacBook Pro 16 inch, it kind of sounds a little bit small. You should still see pretty decent battery life, especially on the 1080p model. Um, however, on the 4K model, you will definitely see a hit in that battery life. In terms of software, it will be running Windows 10 and you might have a preference between Windows, Mac OS or Linux. That's probably a topic for another video. In terms of ports on this laptop, you're getting two Thunderbolt 3 ports, one USB-C Gen 3.1 port, and a full size SD card reader, as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. All the USB-C ports do also support power delivery, which is also really nice to see. So now for some extra features that you get with the Dell XPS 15. So you are getting both Windows Hello and a fingerprint reader. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. 
I personally prefer fingerprint readers on laptops. However, Windows Hello is really convenient and useful. The fingerprint reader is also really fast and responsive and also doubles as the power button, which it should do really on a laptop. You are also getting speakers that finally fire upwards either side of the keyboard like they do on um, the MacBook Pros. That is definitely the best place for speakers unlike last year where they fired out the bottom of the XPS 15. They also sound really nice and clear and really punchy as well. They're probably not quite as good as Apple's 16 inch MacBook Pro speakers, however they are probably some of the best on any Windows laptop. Now let's talk about the price. So it starts at $1,300 and that will get you a Core i5 10300H processor, 8 gigs of RAM, a 256 gig SSD and an FHD screen. You won't get the dedicated graphics card unfortunately, but if you don't think you need it then this might be the option for you. You can then spec it up all the way to over $3,000 and that will get you the Core i7 10875H processor, 64 gigs of RAM, a two terabyte SSD, the 4K UHD touchscreen, and the dedicated graphics card. Now all of these options are definitely really expensive and you're definitely paying a premium here. However, it's still not as expensive for what you get as if you're going for many of Apple's products, especially the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So overall, this has been a great update to the Dell XPS 15. There are just a lot of new features and the design has definitely been refreshed, which is really nice to see. It is still a really premium laptop and you're definitely gonna be paying for that. However, if you think you can make use of all the features, depending on which specs you go for, then it might be for you. It's definitely a laptop geared towards content creators. If you're looking for a laptop for gaming, then you probably should look elsewhere. However, if you just want an all round powerhouse, then it is a really great laptop. That's it from this video. If you liked it, please press the thumbs up button. If you loved it, please consider subscribing.